of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the sacred heart of Jesus, and the immaculate heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the divine will, I enter into the holy divine will. Come, divine will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary and Louisa. In, with, and for all. That all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls. Giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Be Book of Heaven, Volume 7, Part 3 July 2nd, 1906 With her sufferings, she forms a ring for Jesus. As I was in my usual state, and my sufferings kept increasing a little, blessed Jesus came for just a little and told me, my daughter, truly I want to take you, because I want to disengage myself from the world. It seemed he wanted to tempt me, but I did not say anything about his taking me, because obedience was opposed, and also because I am sorry for the world. In the meantime, he showed me his hand. He had a most beautiful ring with a white gem on his finger. And many little gold rings were hanging from this gem that were intertwined and formed a beautiful ornament for the hand of our Lord. He kept showing it, so much did he like it. And then he added, you have done this for me in the past days by means of your sufferings and I am preparing a more beautiful one for you. July 3rd, 1906. The will of God is the paradise of the soul on earth, and the soul who does the will of God forms the paradise of God on earth. Having received communion, I felt all united and clasped to my most divine Jesus. And while he clasped me, I rested in him, and he rested in me. Then he told me, My beloved, the soul who lives in my will rests, because the divine will does everything for her. And while it operates for her, I find the most beautiful rest in her. So the will of God is rest for the soul, and rest for God in the soul. While resting in my will, the soul remains always attached to my mouth, and suckles divine life into herself, making of it her continuous food. The will of God is the paradise of the soul on earth, and the soul who does the will of God comes to form the paradise of God on earth. The will of God is the only key that opens the treasures of the divine secrets 
and the soul acquires such familiarity in the house of God as to dominate as if she were the owner. Who can say what I comprehended about this divine will? A will of God, how admirable, lovable, desirable, beautiful you are. It is enough to say that, being in you, I feel all my miseries and all my evils being dissolved, and I acquire a new being with the fullness of all the divine goods. July 8, 1906. The soul is drawn by the light of Jesus, but obedience does not want it. It continues almost always in the same way. I only feel a little bit more strength. May God be always blessed. Everything is little in the face of his love, even his very privation, even being away from heaven, and only to obey. Now obedience wants me to write something about the light that I still see from time to time. Sometimes I seem to see our Lord inside of me, and another image, all of light coming out of his humanity. More and more, his humanity ignites the fire and the image of the light of Christ, as if it were riddling this fire. And from this riddled fire, a light comes out, fully similar to his image of light. He is all pleased and awaits it anxiously to unite it to himself. And then it becomes incorporated once again into his humanity. Other times, I find myself outside of myself, and I see myself all fire. I see the light that is about to take off from the fire, and our Lord blowing his breath into that light. The light rises and begins its way toward the mouth of Jesus Christ. And with his breath, he rejects it and attracts it. He enlarges it and makes it more shining. And the poor light wriggles about and makes every effort, for it wants to go into his mouth. It seems to me that if I arrived at that, I would breathe my last. Yet I am forced to say in my interior, obedience does not want it, in spite of the fact that saying this costs me my life. God. The Lord seems to delight in playing many jokes with this light. It also seems to me that the Lord comes and wants to review everything that he himself has given me whether everything is orderly and clean of dust. Then he takes my hand and removes the rings that he gave me when he espoused me to himself. One of them he found intact, and the rest he dusted with his breath, and then he placed them back. Then it is as if he clothes me completely and then he places himself near me and says, Now, yes, you are beautiful. Come to me. I cannot be without you. Either you come to me or I to you. You are my beloved, my joy, my contentment. While he says this, the light wriggles about and makes every effort for it wants to go into Jesus. And as it begins its flight, I see that the confessor blocks it with his hands and wants to enclose it inside me. And Jesus remains quiet and lets him do it. Oh God, what pain. 
Every time this happens, it seems I am going to die and reach the harbor. But obedience makes me find myself on the way again. If I wanted to say everything about this light, I would never end. But it is so painful for me to write about this that I cannot go on. Also, many things I am unable to express. Therefore, I keep silent. July 10th, 1906. The one who gives herself completely to Jesus receives the whole of Jesus. As I was in my usual state, our Lord came for a short time and told me, my daughter, the one who gives herself completely to me, deserves that I give myself completely to her. Here I am, at your complete disposal. Whatever you want, take. I did not ask him for anything. I only said to him, My good, I do not want anything. I want only you and you alone. You alone are enough for me in everything. Because if I have you, I have everything. And he, Brava, you asked well. And while wanting nothing, you have wanted everything. July 12, 1906. Everything that serves as sufferings to the creature touches God. Having struggled very much in waiting for my blessed Jesus, I was feeling tired and exhausted. And then coming almost in passing, he told me, my daughter, everything that serves as sufferings or as pricking to the creature, on one hand pricks the creature, on the other touches God. And God feeling touched, at each touch he feels, gives always something divine to the creature. And he disappeared. July 17th, 1906. To the one who does the will of God, Jesus gives the key of his treasures. And there is no grace that comes from God in which she does not take part. This morning, I saw blessed Jesus with a key in his hand. And he said to me, My daughter, this key is the key of my will. It befits the one who lives in my will to have the key in order to open and close as she pleases and to take whatever she likes of my treasures. In fact, by living of my will, she shall look after my treasures more than if they were her own because all that is mine is hers and she shall not spoil them. Rather, she shall give them to others, or shall take for herself whatever can give me more honor and glory. Therefore, behold, I deliver the key to you. Look after my treasures. While he was saying this, I felt all immersed in the divine will, so much so that I could see nothing but will of God. And I spent the whole day in this paradise of his will. What happiness, what contentment. During the night, as I found myself outside of myself, I continued to be in this atmosphere. And the Lord added, see my beloved, for the one who lives in my will, there is no grace that comes from my will for all creatures of heaven and of earth in which she does not take part as first. And this is natural, because the one who lives in the house of a father is the one who abounds in everything. And if the others who are outside receive something, it is the surplus from the one who lives inside. 
But who can say what I understood of this divine will? These are things that cannot be expressed. May everything be for the glory of God. July 21st, 1906. The upright intention purges the action. Having come for a little, blessed Jesus told me, my daughter, all human actions, even holy, done without a special intention for me, come out of the soul full of darkness. While if they are done with an upright and special intention to please me, they come out full of light, because the intention is the purge of the action. July 27, 1906. In the cross, Jesus dowered souls and espoused them to himself. This morning, as my adorable Jesus made himself seen embracing the cross, I thought in my interior, what were his thoughts in receiving the cross? And he said to me, my daughter, when I received the cross, I embraced it as my dearest treasure, because in the cross I dowered souls and espoused them to myself. Now, upon looking at the cross, at its length and breadth, I rejoiced, because I saw in it sufficient dowries for all my spouses, and none of them could fear not being able to marry me because I held in my own hands, in the cross, the price of their dowry. But with this condition alone, that if the soul accepts the little gifts I send to her, that are the crosses, as the pledge of her acceptance of me as her spouse, the marriage is formed, and I give her the gift of the dowry, if then she does not accept the gifts, that is, if she is not resigned to my will, everything is undone. And even if I want to dower her, I cannot, because in order to form a marriage, it always takes the will of both sides. And since the soul does not accept my gifts, it means that she does not want to accept the marriage. July 28, 1906, The Daringness of the Soul. Jesus defends her. Continuing in my usual state, blessed Jesus came for a short time, and as soon as I saw him, I took him and clasped him in my arms, but so tightly as if I wanted to enclose him in my heart. At that moment, I saw some people around me saying, how daring she is. She takes too many liberties. And when one takes liberties, there is not that esteem and respect that one should have. I felt all a blush in hearing this, but I could not do otherwise. And the Lord said to them, It can only be said that one loves, esteems, and respects an object when one wants to make it his own, and when one does not want to make it his own, it means that he does not love it, and therefore he has neither esteem nor respect for it. For example, if one wants to know whether someone loves riches, in speaking to him about riches, he holds them in the highest esteem. He respects rich people, for nothing else than because they are rich, and he would want to make all riches his own. If, on the other hand, he does not love them, in merely hearing one speak about them, he becomes annoyed, and so with all other things. So rather than blame, she deserves praise, and if she wants to make me her own, it means that she loves me, esteems me, 
and respects me. July 31st, 1906, Jesus speaks about simplicity. Continuing in my usual state, blessed Jesus came for a little, and embracing me wholly, he told me, My daughter, simplicity is to virtues as condiment to foods. For a simple soul, there are neither keys nor doors to enter into me, nor are there for me to enter into her, because from all sides she can enter into me, and I into her. Even more, to better say it, she finds herself in me without entering, because by her simplicity she comes to resemble me, who am most simple spirit. And only because I am most simple, I am present everywhere, and nothing can escape my hand. A simple soul is like the light of the sun, in spite of any fog, or of the fact that its rays pass through whatever rubbish, it remains always light. It gives light to all, and it never changes. In the same way, a simple soul, no matter what mortification or displeasure she may receive, does not cease to be light for herself and for those who have mortified her. And if she sees evil things, she does not become stained, but remains always light. Nor does she change, because simplicity is that virtue that most resembles the divine being. Only through this virtue can one participate in the other divine qualities. And only in the soul who is simple are there no impediments or obstacles for divine grace to enter and to operate. In fact, since both one and the other are light, one light easily unites and transforms into the other. But who can say what I comprehended about this simplicity? I feel as though a sea is in my mind, and I am able to manifest but a few little drops of this sea and those disconnected among themselves. Deo gratias. August 8th, 1906. How it is necessary to run without ever stopping. This morning, blessed Jesus came for just a little, and since I was all tired because of his privation, he told me, my daughter, in order for the soul to reach her central point, it is necessary that she run, always, without ever stopping, because by running, her path shall become smoother, and as she keeps going, the point that she must reach in order to find her center shall be manifested to her, and along the way, the grace that is necessary to her journey shall be administered to her, in such a way that, helped by grace, she shall not feel the weight of her toiling or of life. All the opposite for one who walks and stops. In fact, just by stopping, she shall feel the tiredness of those steps that she has already taken and shall lose stamina for the journey. By not walking, she shall not be able to see her point that is, a good most high, and shall not be attracted to it. Not seeing her run, grace shall not give itself in vain, and her life shall become unbearable, because idleness produces boredom and bother. August 10th, 1906. One contentment less on earth one paradise more in heaven. Continuing in my usual state, I saw blessed Jesus for just a little, 
and he told me, My daughter, for every slightest pleasure of which the soul deprives herself in this life for love of me, I shall give her one more paradise in the next life. So one contentment less here, one paradise more there. Imagine a bit how many privations you have suffered in these twenty years of bed because of me, and how many more paradises I shall give you in heaven. On hearing this, I said, My good, what are you saying? I feel honored and almost your debtor because you give me the occasion to be deprived for love of you. And you tell me that you shall give me as many paradises? And he added, It is precisely so. Deo gracias. August 11th, 1906. The cross is a treasure. Finding myself in my usual state, I saw my adorable Jesus with a cross in his hand, all full of white pearls. Giving it to me as gift, he placed it on my breast, and it sank into my heart as inside a room. And then he told me, my daughter, the cross is a treasure, and the safest place in which to keep this valuable treasure is one's own soul. Or rather, it is a safe place when the soul is disposed to receive this treasure with patience, with resignation, and with the other virtues, because the virtues are as many keys that secure it, so as not to spoil it or expose it to thieves. But if it does not find especially the gold key of patience, this treasure shall find many thieves who shall steal it and spoil it. August 25th, 1906. Self-interest and human sciences in priests. This morning, finding myself outside of myself, I seem to see priests and prelates intent on their interests and on human sciences that are not necessary for their state. With the addition of a spirit of rebellion against the authorities superior to them. All afflicted, our Lord told me, my daughter, interest, human sciences, and everything that does not pertain to the priest forms a second nature for him, muddy and rotten. And the works that come from him, even holy, are so stinking, and I feel such nausea that they are unbearable to me. Pray and repair for these offenses, for I can take no more. September 2nd, 1906. Louisa wants to do the accounts with Jesus. Jesus wants her to have no thought about herself. This morning, having to receive communion, I was prepared to make a day of retreat, that is, to prepare myself for death. And after I received communion, I said to Blessed Jesus, let us do the accounts now, so as not to leave them for the last extreme of my life. I myself don't know how I am. I make no reflection over myself, and by not reflecting on it, I do not perceive myself, and so I feel neither fears, nor scruples, nor agitations, while I see that others, who are far more good than I am, and even the very lives of the saints that I read, they all reflect upon themselves, whether they are cold or warm, whether tempted or calm, whether they confess well or badly. And almost all of them are shy, agitated, and scrupulous. All my attention instead is on wanting you, on loving you, and on not offending you. 
As for the rest, I take nothing into account. It seems I have no time to think of anything else. And if I engage in doing it, an interior voice shakes me, scolds me, and says, Do you want to waste time? Think of doing your things with God. Therefore, I myself do not know the state in which I am, whether I am cold, dry, or warm. And if anyone wanted an account of it, I certainly would not be able to do it. I think I did it wrong. So let us do the accounts now, that I may remedy it. And after I prayed him over and over again, he said to me, My daughter, I keep you always on my knees, and so tightly as to give you no time to think about yourself. I hold you like a father holds his little child on his knees. He gives him now a kiss, now a caress. Now he feeds him with his own hands. And now, if inadvertently the little child gets dirty, the father himself takes care of cleaning him. Now, if the father shows himself afflicted, the little one consoles him and dries his tears. If he shows himself irritated, the little one calms him. In sum, the father is the life of the little one and does not let him have the slightest thought about himself, whether he needs to eat, whether he gets dirty, whether he needs to clothe himself, and not even whether he needs to sleep because forming a cradle with his arms, he rocks him to make him fall asleep and lets him sleep on his own lap. And the little one is all the relief and the life of the father, while the other grown-up children take care of reordering the house, of cleaning themselves by themselves, and of all the other affairs. So I do with you. I keep you on my knees like a little daughter, and so intimately united with me as to not let you feel yourself. I think and take care of all of you, cleaning you if you are stained, feeding you if you need food. In sum, I anticipate you in everything, in such a way that you yourself do not perceive your needs and by holding you intimately tight to me. It is a grace that I give you, because you escape many, many defects. While if you had the thought of yourself, oh, into how many defects you would fall. Therefore, think of doing your office of little daughter toward me, and have no thought for anything else. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 7, Part 3. Fiat Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.